Hey guys, welcome back. So we are continuing with more Philip K. Johnson's Hulk series, where now both Bruce and the Hulk are about to get their introduction to the Soul Cage, and how this just might be the doorway to their only solution to saving Charlie. So with that said, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so for this one, we come back just after the Hulk's run-in with the frozen Charlotte, which ended up leaving Charlie's consciousness trapped inside one of those bone powder porcelain dolls. But now when we come back, the first place we head over to is Strange Academy in New Orleans, where we find a few students here like Doyle, the son of Dormammu, along with Zoe and Shaylee, who at this point look to be up later than they should, playing some fighting game, perhaps Marvel vs. Capcom, who knows. But while they're here, Shaylee hears what sounds like huge footsteps incoming, while the others are just caught up in the game. So she asks them, like, hey, did any of you hear that? Only for the next boom to be way louder, to the point where it's like you can't miss it. So the three of them step out of the room to go check it out, only to come to the conclusion that the house is about to fall down on them. So Shaylee, who's half fairy, she creates an exit for them to get out. But at this point, the booms have gotten so loud and so close that now they're just like, hey, whatever it is, I guess we gotta fight it. And at one point, Doyle, Dormammu, he's even like, hey, we got this. We don't need the teachers. Only for Zoe to be like, hey, we don't even know what this is. So to say we got this, that's a bit of a stretch. But following this, when the next boom hits, it's the Hulk who's come here looking for Doctor Strange. And it's pretty obvious given the context leading up to this point that he's come here to get Doctor Strange's help in hopes of him fixing Charlie. And because the Hulk's way of asking for help is very confrontational, because, you know, communication's not necessarily his superpower. But when he gets here, Doyle's just like, I got this. Only for the Hulk to just smack this kid across the hall. So with seeing this, Gus jumps in. And Gus is a frost giant, so he's really strong. But in comparison to the Hulk, there's not really a whole lot that he's doing here. And really, that's nothing to brag about on the Hulk's end. Because he quite literally just ran up in this school and started beating up students. But it isn't too long before the Hulk is hit with a spell. And he hears a voice saying Stephen is otherwise engaged at the moment. To where from here we quickly find that this is the voice of Dr. Voodoo. And it's kind of ironic here because the way that he stops the Hulk. It's clearly a painful method. But to be honest, if we put aside the immediate emergency, as far as Charlie being trapped in a doll, and we think about the full scope of what's been going on throughout this series, if you think about it, the Hulk kind of deserves this right now. Cause not only was he just knocking kids out left and right, but then there's also the underlying situation of him getting payback on Banner. Though in that case, the two of them have been making each other suffer for years. But right here, Dr. Voodoo tells the Hulk that he can talk to him. And he goes on to say, you are an odd one. A soul is a simple thing for me to command, but there are two of you in there, or perhaps more than two, which right there is the first time in a long time that the other Hulks have gotten any acknowledgement. And I mean, that is unless something new is creeping in here. But now with the Hulk handled, Dr. Voodoo's trying to figure out why the Hulk came here looking for Doctor Strange. And he even asked, have you come to destroy him as you destroy everything you touch? Which right there just goes back to the guilt that both Banner and the Hulk have been feeling as far as why they never wanted Charlie to follow them in the first place. But also right here, Dr. Voodoo notices that Banner's holding a doll, which is what makes him and the others aware of what's actually going on with Charlie. So after this, we jump forward a few hours, where at this point, Dr. Voodoo's been meditating and looking into Charlie's memories to get an idea of what happened. And during this time, Doyle and the other kids, they're all just watching in suspense. And at one point, Doyle, the son of Dormammu, he's just like, why is Dr. Voodoo helping them after what the Hulk did to our school and Zoe tells him that's something the ancient one can fix in like five minutes so of course that's not as pressing of an issue but right here with Dr. Voodoo looking into the mind and memories of Charlie he's able to see everything that went down as far as Charlie heading into the cellar and being chased by Nepali which for the most part comes off as a bit of a recap to what we saw take place in issues 9 10 and 11 and after seeing what he needs to see he tells Shaylee that he must speak to their guest and to tell the other students to stay away from the cellar until this business is finished. So following this, Dr. Voodoo goes to talk to Dr. Banner. And the first thing he asks Bruce is how did he come by this doll? So first, Bruce tries to explain that it's not just a doll. And Dr. Voodoo's aware of that at this point. But all he really knows is that there's just some girl in there. So Bruce goes on to try to explain by telling him Charlie's a friend. Or Hulk's friend, I guess. She got in some trouble and she's been traveling with us. Which right there just has Dr. Voodoo like, yeah, it seems like you got her in a great deal more trouble. 
which as we know throughout this series, that's been one of Bruce's biggest fears. And it's the main reason why he didn't want Charlie to follow him and the Hulk in the first place, only to jump forward to now just to find them in a situation where this could be it for her. So Dr. Voodoo goes on to explain that Charlie's soul is still alive, in a matter of speaking, but her body is gone. And hearing this, Bruce is just like, hey, you guys are magicians, there has to be a way. So Dr. Voodoo ends up telling him that, well, yeah, there actually is a way. It's a foul and unnatural act, but not impossible. So next, Dr. Voodoo ends up taking out and setting down a soul cage. And he explains to Bruce both what this is and what needs to be done. So for starters, he lets him know when a demon or evil spirit is driven out of a body, it must be destroyed. If it cannot be destroyed, it must be caged. Which right there explains the purpose of a soul cage, with each of the nails hammered into it representing a demon or powerful spirit trapped inside. And as he sets it down, he goes on to tell Bruce, inside this soul cage are many spirits. One was once a powerful magician, a flesh weaver. He spun the unspent years of his victims' lives into living flesh and wore their bodies for his twisted fantasies. If you can find him, I believe he could do what you require. But the soul cage is vast, and there are worse things inside even than he, which right there means that Bruce has to go inside of this soul cage and find the flesh weaver to somehow convince him to save Charlie. And there's no telling how long that'll take in there. So Dr. Voodoo asks Bruce if he's willing to risk eternity at the mercy of such creatures to save his friend. And without hesitation, Bruce says yes. And it has Jericho curious to the point where he asks, what is this child to you? And you can tell for Bruce, he's still kind of in that place where he's gradually coming to terms with how much Charlie means to him. So for a moment here, Bruce is just like, I don't even know. She's just a kid, but she's hurt and angry like I was and brave like I never was. It's our fault this happened to her. Hulk and I are all she's got and she's all we've got too. So after hearing this, Dr. Voodoo is just like, that will do very well. Just before he reaches into Bruce's chest to create the nail to hammer into the soul cage that'll open the door to send Bruce inside. But as he does this, Dr. Voodoo also tells him, if you would restore the girl, she will need you both which right there just has bruce like hold up hey well wait a minute and it's pretty wild because when this happens dr voodoo tells bruce to find the flesh weaver named suman guru but do not trust him even in life he was the most evil of men what a lifetime of torment has done to him i can only imagine so effectively dr voodoo has sent both bruce and the hulk into the soul cage so they can find this flesh weaver and figure it out but as bruce's body just lays there all of a sudden it starts to hulk out and the funny thing here really is just the expression on dr voodoo's face because as far as he knows he sent both bruce and the hulk into the soul cage which now has him like well who is this and it's left as a mystery to us as well for the time being and it has dr voodoo like hey well this can't be right i drove you out only for this hulk to respond by saying did you and right after that dr voodoo's just like hey you came here for my help but this Hulk just snatches his staff and says, mm, did I? And right here, I can't help but to think about what Dr. Voodoo said to Bruce just moments ago, where he mentioned that he wasn't sure if there was more than two in Bruce's body. And now after sending two into the soul cage, there's still someone here. But following this, we head inside of the soul cage, where we find Bruce breaking out of a coffin that's piercing through what looks to be like one of many floating islands. So as Bruce stands up to kind of get a look at what this place is, he loses his balance and he falls right out. And because of the angle we're shown initially, it's hard to tell how far down exactly he's heading, but on the way down, he grabs for a branch, it breaks, and suddenly a green hand just reaches out and catches him while saying, finally, got you, with it being the hand of the Hulk. And right here, man, this is one of those moments where it's like, yo, I gotta see where this is going. Cause if this flesh weaver is able to spend the unspent years of his victim's lives into living flesh, what does it mean if that person's immortal? Cause I also imagine that time moves differently inside of the soul cage. So that might be a thing too. So yeah, I'm excited to see more about this place as well as figure out who Dr. Voodoo's dealing with on the outside. Is it another Hulk? Is it the mother of horrors? Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. 
But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again on the next one. All right. Later.